Welcome to this video on Research Basics, which is an introductory video to our series on conceptualizing research. What I wanted to do in this video is just bring to your attention a number of things that might just help you, uh, might just help make your journey a little bit easier. So the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the fact that research documents are made up of arguments conceptualized around a problem for a particular audience. So the problem is what makes this research important and the audience would be your field or your discipline. So what we tend to do is we make claims and they become more or less truth-like depending on the, on the evidence we present and how much that evidence convinces our audience. So understanding what constitutes evidence in academic contexts really is important and can help you work out a couple of things in terms of writing. So there are two sources of evidence in academic contexts. One is primary evidence, and this is why research papers tend to be, you know, the, the top of the pile. So the data that's collected from primary sources, such as interviews, experiments, archival documents, etc., that's all primary data. And that's at the top of the hierarchy because it's empirical proof, although that's not relevant to all disciplines. And then the second source of data is published sources. So published sources are accepted as evidence because they've been through the peer review process. So when an author submits a paper to a journal, it's, it's often blind reviewed where they don't know who the author is by experts in the field. And then if the paper is published, it's considered to be worthwhile. So it carries some authority. So published sources count as evidence. So there's a hierarchy of value to sources. So published sources from top international journals will carry a lot of weight from top or key um, authorities in the field will carry weight. Obscure journals will provide less value, but you can always make an argument with evidence uh, for a particular source. But just to understand the value hierarchy in sources is important for writing. And then to link referencing to your evidence. So if secondary sources count as evidence, then referencing becomes very important because this is where you show your evidence. So referencing is not just about showing you know, where you got your information from. It's about your reader being able to read your sources as evidence. So it's integral to your authority as an author. And outdated journals and obscure book references could be read by your reader as being weak unless you've made an argument for including them. The stronger the evidence for your claim, the more likely your reader is to buy your truths. If you work in a field where um, the area is new or you're working in a controversial area, then you'll need to provide much more evidence. You'll have to stack the evidence because this will be different for your audience and you will need to show that there is evidence out there for your claims. So most papers tend to provide evidence as a combination of primary and, and published sources. So research dissertations will do that. Um, but there are some fields, of course, where, uh, you know, the the field is based on published sources, philosophy, for example. And if you're writing a literature review, then you would focus on published sources as, as your evidence. Now, the other point that I wanted to make, and I think it's, it's really important to understand this, is at the beginning of a research project, we may feel overwhelmed because 
we're taking this very complex chaotic world and trying to create a somewhat linear uh, structure so that we can write it on paper. And although we, we tend to come to a research project right in the middle, what we're doing when we start a research project is to construct a beginning and then find an end. So we always begin in the middle of this complex chaotic world. And then what we need to do is to simplify, to find a golden thread that has a beginning and an end. And that's what conceptualization is about. And it means transferring all the ideas that you have in your head, all these complex ideas, into a concrete research project that can be operationalized. And once you have this golden thread clear, the simplicity, you can then later on build in the complexity again. But it's very difficult to begin with the complexity. And the reason why conceptualization is so important is because to have clear writing and convincing writing, you need to have this clear research focus. And to be focused, the research needs to be well conceptualized. So conceptualization includes identifying a researchable problem that is relevant to your audience, situating that problem in a body of literature, finding an appropriate research design, and framing the research with an appropriate conceptual framework. Now I have a number of videos on developing the problem purpose statement, which is one of the key tools for conceptualizing your research. So please go and have a look at those. It's a very helpful tool that will enable you to establish your golden thread. So just to go over the key points of this video, research documents are framed ar around an argument which, are, which is conceptualized around a problem for a particular audience. There are two main kinds of evidence, primary evidence and published sources, and there's a hierarchy of value, of value around these sources. Referencing is important and paying attention to referencing and referencing formatting because it's tied to your evidence and to your authority as a writer. And research conceptualization is about taking the chaos and finding a golden thread that has a beginning and an end. Thank you for watching this video on Research Basics, which is an introduction to our series on research conceptualization.